Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Manton IV here. I'm amazed that the Lord would help have me continue on the blessing of the Father because it's such an important message. So I'm going to continue in that. We're in volume six today. Can you imagine? I was busy the last few days and uh, uh, doing many things. And so I had put some other messages up live. But now I'm back in person, real time right now. Uh, today is July 1st, and um, it's beginning the second half of the year. So I want to prophesy to you that this is going to be the greatest year you've ever had. And uh, the first half of the year was pretty bogus in a lot of ways. But the Lord is about to do something phenomenal for us, his people, and we're going to begin to see the glory of the blessing of the Father, the Father God upon us. I found in, by the Holy Ghost, you know, it's so supernatural, my ministry. I, you know, some people can study for years and hours, and you love this uh, design with, with the dove, and let me show you something else. Look at that. That's the map of Kenya. That is the outline of the map of Kenya. I thought it's very prophetic. The Holy Spirit flying over Kenya. Look at that. So we did that just so we can make that statement prophetically. Now, Proverbs 23, verse 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let, my, uh, let your eyes observe my ways. And how to, you begin to go on to how to carry on in your life who to avoid and who to embrace and very important people. And the Father can also protect you from the wrong folks, from the wrong people. You don't want to be with the wrong people. You always want to be with the right people. And uh, you, ever, you ever heard like a child uh, when the father is telling him like, hey, the mother and the father are telling him, don't fool around with the wrong people, the wrong crowd, you know, because it could take you out to, to a mess. Now, friends are like a prophecy of your future. Who you, whether you like it or not, who you hang around with, you become like in one way or another. The environment you're in will produce something in you, good or bad, depending on what it is. But we need to know the Father is always looking over us no matter what. And I pray every day for the right people to connect. I'm praying for you. This is a prophetic word uh, over you right now that God will disconnect you from the wrong people. I'm talking to you as a father, as a papa, as one who loves you, as an overseer, as a bishop, as a, a prophet and an apostle and a pastor. You know what I mean? And I hate using all those titles, but it's kind of, it's got that functionality in it, you know? So the Lord is going to cause... The wrong people to flee from you sovereignly and supernaturally. <laughs> and he's going to cause the right people to come your way because that's what you need. And that's what we need very much. I want to speak this encouraging word here also from Proverbs 23 verse 10. It says, do not, to, to let you know that God is, is real and he's there, and he's the father, but he also has fathers on the earth who want to help protect the children of God. <laughs> Woo. It says in verse 10, Proverbs 23, verse 10, Do not remove the ancient landmark, nor the fields of the fatherless. Even to the fatherless, he's a father. Imagine that. And even to many spiritually fatherless children, I'm a father. Yep. The day will come when we'll speak to millions online, not just hundreds and thousands. And we're going to go all out to, to get there on every platform, on every way of communicating. Oh my, I'm just so excited about that. And these ones that try to limit our audiences and choke the fees and choke the accounts, they're devils from hell 
God is going to have us find a way around all of that, that we can speak to the nations and the multitudes of the earth like the Lord has commissioned and ordained me to do. And uh, watch for that. Watch for that. I'm also, before I go a minute further, I'm also very excited to let you know that the e-books are ready. And those of you that have sewn, I'm sending you uh, a, a surprise. You're going to get it, okay? So communicate with me by WhatsApp. You'll see the WhatsApp number in the heading of the title of the message here and also in the comments and send me a WhatsApp message. Please do that to remind me, but I'm going to find those that have been partnering with us and I'm going to give you a special love gift from Papa here, okay? That's going to bless your life and enrich your life. Uh, they are ready and uh, they're coming to you. I think one will be sent immediately and then the next one in another day or so after that, but uh, we're going to get right on getting them out and you will receive, as I had said, the ebook. It's plural. That's a secret. A little love gift from the, from the prophet here. Okay. So don't, don't remove the ancient landmark, nor enter the fields of the fatherless. Don't mess with them. Watch this, verse 11. Here it is. For their Redeemer is mighty, and he will plead their cause against you. If you mess with an orphan, I wonder even that, like I'm a leader, but, I'm, but I wonder if also sometimes I've made a jokingly, joking statement. I'm like, I'm an orphan because both my parents are gone on. And because I got saved, I brought the gospel to the whole family. And the power of God hit them all and they're in heaven now. So, praise God. But I don't have any earthly parents, Mike. All my grandparents are gone. All my, my mother and father are gone. And do I qualify as an orphan? Maybe. <laughs> in, in some regard, funny enough. But I, I say this to encourage everybody. We have a father. You understand? Father. Don't hate the word. It's not a bad word. Even if you had a bad earthly father and a bad experience with a father. Even if you had a bad, you're a lady, you had a bad experience with men. The father of your children acted like a dog. I know. I know. Or you had a daddy that wasn't very straight and very good. and But still, they made it possible for you to find your way into this world. You know what I mean? So that's why the Bible is clear about honoring them. You need to honor the Father. Now, if you want to be blessed in the Spirit, you also need to have a spiritual Father. Now, everybody has their own choice what they want to do. You know, people can just try to write it themselves and not do anything. Hey, John Francis the Third, bless you, man. Welcome on. I'll chat with everyone after the broadcast here. So the Lord is um, very serious about the father structure because that's how he created humans. That's how he created the universe and the earth and everything in it. And that's how he created you and me. So he said, honor thy father and mother that you'll be blessed and all will go well with thee and even you'll have long life. All will go well with you on the earth and you'll even have long life. Hello. So the Lord is uh, very serious about, about that. So you need to understand that the Father God has great big plans for you. Now, I, now again, I was saying, you could try to wing it yourself, but it's good to have a spiritual father. What? A person who can cover you. Not that you're smothered by the cover. Not covered to smother. Even mother's in the word smother. Isn't that funny? Anyway, you think about that. But to, to help you, because a mentor, a person that's gone on has experience that you don't need to. They have hard experiences that they went through to learn things. You can learn from them by being a, a protege to them. You don't need to uh, go through all the hard knocks in your life. If you want to figure everything out by experience rather than expertise, hey, help yourself. But there's somebody that can help pave the road for you. Now, here's another thing. You have to find someone that cares because not everyone does. Even preachers, even teachers, even pastors, they don't always care 
about everybody. And don't get bent about that. Just find the one who cares about you. If someone cares about you, value and cherish that connection and that relationship. Don't um, neglect it. Don't neglect that opportunity. Many people didn't have it, you know, because of whatever was going on in the family. They didn't take advantage of, uh, uh, how can I say, asking of their own father questions or spending more time with them. And then, you know, seasons change. People move on. and you, But you can't live your life in regret. What you could do is learn something now from a father. Uh, a learner will always succeed somehow in greater ways than a non-learner you need to be like learning pushing yourself to learn yearning to learn yearn to learn loving to learn about life about finances about success about carrying on in life and the, you know whatever because whatever area you don't have knowledge in you will suffer in that area you fail to succeed very highly in that area. So, I'm busy, but I don't mind answering questions when people ask me. Here's another thing. In Proverbs 23, verse 24, The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and mother be glad. And let her who bore you rejoice. Then it goes to the next verse that I read before. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. So make your dad and mom proud. Make your spiritual leader proud. Make your pastor, your prophet, your apostle, who, whoever that is. Make them proud. If it's me, great. Make, make me feel happy. One of the biggest joys in my life is to see people succeed. I hate to see people struggle. I hate to see people broke. I hate to see people in, in destitution of, uh, of financial need and all that. I hate it. 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 I want to hear people are getting blessed. I thought of one of my daughters in the Lord and I wrote her a message yesterday and I said, uh, uh, do you have your driving license? Because I have something in mind, you know, some, uh, uh, the Lord's talking to me. Something good is going to happen. Do you have your driving license? Yes, but she wrote back, yes, but I have not that, ex you know, I have to get more experience in driving. I said, do it. Let's find the driving school, whatever. What does that mean? At the end of the road, read between the lines. God's going to give her a car. And she'll be driving around the city where she wants to go. Not taking this public transport. Sitting in a hot box, smelly and all that suffering. Standing on the road, breathing all the dust. Make your own atmosphere and clean your air filters. By the way, if you have a car, you need to open the glove box and reach back in there and take that air con, that AC air filter that does the cabin of the car, the inside of the car, and throw them out every once in a while. I change mine every three weeks because in a dusty place, it just gets dirty. And then I keep you taking, you shake it, you can blow it up. Just buy a new one every once in a while. Have the air clean. Get air freshener in your car. Put, get a Bluetooth system. I, if I could show you here, I can't turn this camera this way, but I can show you my Bluetooth uh, screen and whole setup with the microphone and the whole system through the speaker. It's very good in, the, in my mobile office here. And I have the atmosphere of worship, what I want to listen to, what I want to do. The air is clean. It smells good. I put up the windows. My windows are tinted. You know, I have a nice tint so the sun is not glazing in. And also I can see out, but everyone can't see in too well. I have my privacy. I can drive. I can feel, you know, to, to move around in comfort. I don't know who didn't tell you that, but I prophesy too that every person that's connected with me, listen to God's prophet here, every person that's a partner of my, of me, with me in the ministry, is going to be driving their own great car. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. I know people in a place where I am that nobody has their car. They all take public transport. And maybe don't have enough money to do a taxi every time. Because that's expensive. But thank God for Uber and Bolt. Bolt is better than Uber. It's a bit cheaper and they have more cars on the road. Uber's more the first the pioneer of it. They're a bit more expensive. So there's one called Bolt, B-O-L-T. I don't think they're that big in the U.S., but they're big in Africa and some places. 
and just call them and you get a little car and it's cheap to get around but maybe you can't do that every time so you take these nasty public transport buses nissan vehicles they call them a tattoos whoa, whoa i've never been in one and i don't ever plan to be in one just want to tell you that so it's not for me it's not my style i need to have some comfort god god knows we have enough stress going on in life and all the things we need to deal with not to be comfortable and there's even a higher level of transportation because now the public transport's even worse. They're making people wear masks. They cut back the traffic. They're using the smaller planes. People are missing their connections because they're so overbooked and uh, planes are running late and all that because of all this COVID-19 nonsense, you know? And uh, it's tough. So I was listening to a, fr a friend of mine speaking in a meeting. He's talking about how the Lord's blessing him to have his own private air transport, you know? You know what I mean? So there's another level like that. Someone said, oh, could I ever do that? Well, it's possible if you can be faithful and sow seed and pay the price. You can have anything you want. You want to have a big house? Let me prophesy you'll have a good house of your own, place of your own, your own environment. the way And everything there the way you want it. The right furniture, the right lighting, the right decor, the right paintings on the walls, the right colors. The right furniture, the right design, beautiful kitchen, beautiful living room, super comfortable king-size bed. Come on now, come on now, come on now. I'm talking to you as a father. And you can have a... Oh, I feel the anointing on that. Just falling on me. I feel my legs are starting to... Like, I feel this vibration going through my physical being here. Woo, Jesus. Receive the anointing right now for prosperity. I felt led of the spirit for many days now, few, last few days since I haven't been doing this live, uh, the last three to four days or so. I felt, I felt like the Lord say to me, he said, to, he said it to me several times. I didn't just feel it, I heard it clearly. I want you to speak blessings over my people. Well, I'm doing that right now and I'm good. Guess what? Good news. I'm going to continue in this tomorrow or the next day. I'm going to continue in this because we're not done. There's more to say. And the Lord is going to release blessings over you, my friend. My precious dear one, my son, my daughter, my friend, my covenant friend and partner, you, you that are that. Now, a lot of people just coming on, getting into the flow, coming on to listen, welcome, karibu, karibuni, which means plural, many, that's in Swahili, uh, Kenya again, Swahili for uh, welcome, you're welcome. Karibu sana means you're very welcome. Welcome very much into the family, into the flow, into this tribe that we call Dominion, the Dominion tribe. <laughs> but I, I, I feel it coming up again in the spirit. I want to prophesy. Every one of you is going to have a car. Get your license, get your driving school thing, get ready, get comfortable on the road because you're going to be... Whoosh, whoosh, Play the worship music you want, listen to my messages, listen to a teaching, listen to scriptures on audio. I have that. Uh, and in my other car, in the other place, I have this, this six CD changer. I have all the CDs of the word in there, the whole book of Proverbs and other ones. And I just play and listen to the word over and over and over. And you need to get that in your spirit instead of listening to this noise that's going on in the public world. No wonder people are half crazy and half, you know, a bit damaged in the, in the thinking the synopsis of the thoughts don't work too well because of all the noise and the smoke and the stench and the filth and the, the nasty environment. You know, you don't need to be in there. You need to be in a clean, beautiful environment. Come on now. I'm prophesying here. Filled with the presence of God. Now, some spoiled people in America, they just think, I have a car. What do you mean, prophet? I have a car. I've had a car for years. Well, you're blessed. Not everyone in the world does. Let me tell you, not everyone in the world does. Because you got to buy it, you need money. If you didn't have credit, you couldn't get it. You got to pay insurance, you got to pay maintenance, you got to have a house to park it at safe. You know, there's a lot of little particulars. I was thinking about if people want to travel to another country, you got to get the visa, big requirements on that. Then you have to go through this process, then you have to get there, then you have to get set up, then you have to have people accept you because you're from another country. Like if you wanted to emigrate to America, not an easy process. I was watching some show of these millionaires selling multi-million dollar houses, a real estate show. And I just love this show because it's just so much luxury and ambiance. And they're, 
But these, these people on there, the only problem they had is though somebody talked about them. I thought, I wish you lived in the real world. Oh, oh poor little you, rich little you. you. The only problem you ever had in your life is like, oh, somebody said something bad and I'm mad and I have to go rebuke them and straighten that out. And, and it seems on these shows, that's what they're doing. I thought, oh, God, if you really had any real trials in your life, if you really were a warrior on the front lines in other nations like me, and gone through so many things, so many attacks, and so much persecution, so much, oh my, you, you know, you don't know, but it's good to paint your mind with that, but I thought, what if someone wanted to emigrate to there, and set all that up, it's a big process, but still, if it's God's will for you, and you build your faith, you can get anywhere you want, and I want to stand behind you, I want to pray for you to be blessed, I want to pray for you, to see, oh God, I feel the anointing. Whew, this is powerful. I want to pray for you to see the world and enjoy this world that God made. You only live once. I heard a woman of God who's now 80 years old. She was preaching and she said, uh, some things that ship sailed already. Not possible. You had a dream, but you didn't do it in a certain amount of time. And the opportunity has an expiration date. That's funny reality, but someone needs to tell you that. You go, ooh, yeah, that's real. So I better get busy with what I can do now for the rest of my days and months and years, many years that I have. I better do what I can do now. But everything that I ever thought about and dreamed before, I didn't necessarily get it. Hello. And some ships have sailed, you know. But you got to redeem the time and do what you can now. You still have a lot of opportunity. And God is a good God, by the way. It's not a secret. I say it like, Phew. but it's not a secret. God is a good God. He's the redeemer, he said here in Proverbs 23, verse 11. The redeemer is mighty. And he will plead their cause against anyone that tries to harm them. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and the blessing of the Father that makes rich. In Jesus' name, upon my precious friend, son, daughter, friend, partner, connected one, in Jesus' name. Uh, the information on how you can sow into this anointing to do a transaction with heaven to, for you to be blessed in your life. To have these things that I'm talking about. You want to have big things, you need to sow. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Seed time and harvest. Genesis 8. Genesis 8, 22. Seed time and harvest. Some things work by seed, not by prayer. You got to sow. You got to give. You got to connect. Tithing. Malachi 3, 10 to 12. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse. So they'll be meeting my house. That there'll be a blessing in my work. And then I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings so much that there's not room enough to receive, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I'll make you a delightsome land for me. You, your life will become the great place. Proverbs 11.25 says, A generous one will become like a well-watered garden. A generous person will become like a well-watered garden. But you had to be generous first. Scripture also says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So you need to give and then you also will receive. Because Jesus said, I'll give you back 30, 60, 100 fold. For your shame, you'll have double. For your trouble, you'll have double. Isaiah chapter 61 says that, about the seventh verse, I think. And then also uh, Job 42.10. After Job did some good righteous things, the Lord began to bless him and gave him back double of his fortunes the Lord will also do that for you but you have to be cooperating in that system of giving and that's how it works my friend so obey God whatever he's telling you you know and also let me see your prayer request as you're sowing I want to pray for you and I want to release more blessings on you I'm going to continue in this and I'm praying the, the great words of Isaiah 48, chapter 17. I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. 
And the Lord is going to bless your life. And the Lord is going to provide for you. And the Lord is going to encourage you. Numbers 24, right, says he'll make his face to shine upon you and bless you and give you his prosperity and his peace. I declare that over you, the blessing of the Father. The blessing of the Father. In Jesus' name, much is coming. The greatest season you've ever entered, you've, you were entering it now. And you're going to see the hand of God coming upon you. And I'm glad to be that conduit, that oracle, that intercessor, that leader that can release the fire of the blessing of heaven upon you. The power, the creative power of his blessings upon you in Jesus' mighty name. So just know that the Lord is with you. He's working behind the scenes. Many things are about to come forth. And he is the one that is the glory and the lifter of your head. Be encouraged today in Jesus' name that he is working for you. And these things that I'm talking about are going to become a tangible reality in your life. And that's thus saith the Lord, the blessing of the Father. And I'll be back on the next broadcast to talk to you further about this in Jesus' name. I am Thomas Manthon IV. Thank you, partners and friends, for connecting. And uh, again, uh, remind me of which book you'd like, and I'm going to be setting the ebooks of these out to our partners in Jesus' name. Love you much. Talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you.